some hope for the younger generation there'll be something there by the time they show up. And so when you, say, when you sit there and you see people go, well, why don't we do this? Ryan is talking about some proposals that are so modern. He gets, he gets attacked. Oh, it takes 40 years to get the budget in control. Ladies and gentlemen, does anybody else have something to get it within 40 years? Now, the, the, the study, the group I belong to, the conservative uh, research group, they have one that does it in 20. And that's in a perfect world. Has anybody taken a look at the makeup of the Senate and the White House? You want to talk about a perfect world, you can go somewhere else and, and watch Fantasy Land. We have a real tough battle. Now, when we got to this budget crisis that's coming up with the debt, but you should feel good about one thing. You've got 83 freshmen who have made a commitment, and they will literally um, fall on the sword on this issue. I'm worried that they will fall on the sword. I have been where those freshmen are. I stood up, and I'll tell you something, I have a great friend, she is absolutely, she's gorgeous, articulate, she's just nicer than hell, but she's got to understand, we have to work as a team. No one person can win this war. No one person can go out and be a spokesman for everybody else without having a consensus. And the freshmen are who we've got to worry about right now. And I was once one of those exposed freshmen. I went through six years of hell fighting in a tough district here. And what bugs me is the fact that you've got to understand that there are those on the tough seats that make the difference between us watching Obama do another Obamacare, watching the, the left do their radical agenda, or being able to hold the line and stop it. And the only thing that makes a difference to them is those 83 freshmen. So you cherish them as, a, as you would cherish your children. You know they are what's the future. And we lose the freshmen, we have lost the future on this. Now, I did something that most people wouldn't think of. Because I was a class of 95. I don't know how many remember, but I did the nomination speech for New Gingrich in 95. We got in trouble because I used a surfing analogy, and they thought Republicans shouldn't be allowed to surf. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, the fact is, is that, that I gave a pin to every one of the freshmen. And when we came in in 95, they made pins up called majority makers. And you look around when you ever go to Washington, see a dome, majority makers. I had pins made up for these freshmen that says majority makers too. And the reason why I put on there, I said, you guys wear this. And it's not to remind you, it is to remind every chairman, every powerful Republican, that their chairman, not because they've been around for so long, not because they're so smart and so knowledgeable, their chairman, because you guys, got elected in the last election. And they will only stay chairman if you guys get elected in the next election. So every time a chairman gets up on it on TV, every time someone says something, they've got to remember how's this going to affect these kids who are fighting in the heavy ground. And let me say this, there's been a lot of talk about where we go from here and who do we trust. We better darn well trust those that are willing to fight by our side. Can I say it really bluntly is the fact that can we all agree now that that swishy moderate in Massachusetts who, who took that Senate seat has done more to defend the Republic. The, you know, the new senator of Massachusetts has done more to defend the Republic than all our conservative members sitting in safe districts have been able to do. Because he's a critical person at the critical place, at the critical time, and stopped the Obama revolution dead in its tracks. And he did. So be aware of that. So be appreciative of the guys who may not do what we always want to do, don't always vote the way we want to do, don't always talk the way we want to do, but be appreciative that without them doing what they're doing, the rest of us can't take the positions we want to and can't do what we, we desperately need for the republic. So when I say that down the line, look, I know you're, you're nervous about a lot of things, but all I gotta say is we are drawing a very bright line with, with the president and the Democrats. We had a meeting last week with the pre president he said, I cannot do this without you. Paul Ryan stood up and said, then stop trashing us. <laughs> so let me just leave you with this one is, uh, look, there's a whole lot of leadership in Washington on our side that is not perfect and not good. But if you're looking for the perfect, remind you uh, across the board, every man in this room, if the ladies were looking for perfect, there'd be a lot of bachelors running around. <laughs>
We're, we've got our team, we've got a very good team, and we know how serious it is. Please help us by remembering we can't afford to make mistakes here. So if we take some tough votes, get through some of this, I think we're coming to a real head right now, and, it's, and don't try to second guess where we can go with this thing. Leadership's on top of it. You've got people that have been through the 90s. We've fought this battle before, and our biggest advantage is, is that we're not the wacko extremists they are. Thus, we have the ability to outmaneuver them. They're locked into a left-wing extremist agenda, and that pigeonholes them. And any general here, anybody who's ever been in the military, or anybody who's ever played football, somebody corners themselves on one side of the field, they're so much easier to beat and defeat. And that's what we're going to do. God bless you, and stay